All right, so I am back, and today we're going to go over the comments on the Rant of the Week uh, for BotCon prices. Um, real quick before we get into this, again, I want to apologize for the delay in, in this particular video and in videos in general just due to my work schedule. I've actually been called like six times already this morning. It is 10 o'clock in the morning, and work has called me six times, and... Uh, they they want me in, but I tell them I, I'm right in the middle of something. So, um, and uh, also on a completely different story, uh, I almost took down the Optibotamus uh, videos that I had for a while back, and the uh, Star Wars spoilers rant. Um, but instead, what I did was I disabled the comments. I, I've been getting trolled. Just to the point where it's no longer, where it's no longer fun on, on those videos, um, and, and you know people that don't want to watch the whole video, so they they leave me three paragraphs of nasty stuff that I cover in the video, like hey, you know, like hey, I'm going to talk about this, you know, and I talk about it, and then but they don't watch the whole video, so instead they decide to to, to troll me because of something they think I said or did say. Um, you know, stuff like that, and that's, that's the Optobotomous one, I mean, and, and, you know, at first I was getting a lot of really good responses, and I'd still say the majority of the responses were good, um, and so I got a lot of really good responses, um, for the first, you know, month or so it was out, but now, only people that are commenting are these just horrible trolls, and I, I mean, one of them even told me, eat their socks, I mean, I mean, stuff like that, I, I, I just like, you know, whatever. Um, but some of them are just like, oh my god, this this these people need to stop. Um, and it was getting really irritating, and I, I was getting just tired of seeing it. Um, so I, I disabled comments on that one. And then also the Star Wars one, because I said um, that it was refreshing to see a girl as the main hero in the movie. Um apparently that makes me a feminist and anti-feminist whatever the fuck that means um I, I don't know how i could be declared a feminist by a bunch of people and an anti-feminist for one single thing that i said um but in the sensitive community um i i just <laughs> uh I, I just it just kind of pissed me off. Um, so I, I'm done. I'm done with that one too. Um, I'm not going to take the video down so you guys can fucking... <laughs> you, you know, all you trolls out there can just fucking watch it and just enjoy it. Whatever. Um, and... Yeah. Um, anyway. Um, it, it just... It, like I said, it just irritated me. and I, I, I was done. I was done with it. I'm, I'm done. Um, I, I've have very little time right now and I'm not going to waste my time on tr reading troll comments on a video from, let's see, the Star Wars was two months ago, up to bottom was like three, almost four months ago now. So I, I don't have time to waste on that. Um, so unfortunately I, I disabled all the comments so nobody can comment on them at all. Um, but I think everybody that's important, like all my fan base that are here, um, that watch my videos regularly, uh, I think they've already said their piece. Um, so, anyway, let's talk about the uh, BotCon prices. Um, let's see, Sammy Turner says, The only thing in their defense, and even though I agree with everything you are saying, is just Fun Pub is not related to Hasbro. Each year... They have to get permission to use a mold and a name um, of the bot. Yeah, yeah, they they do. Um, they and Hasbro sometimes says, "Hey, you can use this this mold, this mold, or this mold," and that's all you. That's your options. Um, but at the same time, you know, Hasbro has a huge claim in Botcon, uh, a huge claim with the TF uh, TFCC. You know. You, they have a huge stake in it, um, and if they do it, if they would have done it right, um, then they could have made a lot more money off of it. 
um, rather than just be like, oh, yeah, you, you can use that mold. Um, you know, they, they're treating the Transformers sometimes like, you know, like their their redheaded stepchild that, you know, they just don't care about. You know, it's like, oh, why, why don't you go play in traffic? You know, um, that that's how I feel sometimes. And, and it's like, you know, Fun Pub, you know, they're doing the best they can, but Hasbro's... You know, saying like, yeah, you can use that, but you have to pay us this much money for that mold. Um, so, anyway, uh, moving on. Let's see here. Um, Hasbro licenses them the products, um, then Fun Pond has to pay to get it painted. And this year, the they got new heads remolded, but even... Even so, those figures are not worth $100 a piece. They're not all remolded heads, even. <laughs> they, they, I think they only get like two or three new heads, and that's it. That's all they get. The rest are straight repaints. Um, it baffles my mind. Why don't, why don't they sell them separately so people can get the ones they want? Uh, the only reason is to get you to spend more money. But I think people would spend more money at the show if their money didn't go to the expensive exclusives. This year, this year's other big exclusives is Botcon, or at Botcon is R.I.D. Megatron with the Beast Wars Megatron head. Ugh. Just, just no. Uh, and then he also says, uh, "I wish if something." says exclusive it not repaint or remold i wish it was a new mold uh repaints are fine for mainline toys uh but not exclusives or, or something that we wouldn't have gotten out elsewhere like um the bot con games of deception that had thundercracker dirge and thrust at the time the line was canceled and that gave us the last three of the seekers so it's like i could understand that at that time uh, but now it's just kind of like uh, we're getting repaints of characters in mo in modes that they never were in, and it just kind of baffles me, like to Um If the mold is done for you, and all you do is repaint seventy five percent of the work um, for you, uh, so they want us to pay for a product that they did 25% in the, in that case. It should only pay them 20% of their asking price. Now they, now they did make a character I've wanted uh, for a long time, Spinster. But the mold is not worth that price. Maybe if they use Voyager Springer. When it comes to Spinster though, if you have the fans project Bruticus... Um, and so you had the original uh, Energon Bruticus or whatever. Uh, one of the helicopters, there's a repro label set that will upgrade him into um, Spinster. So, uh, just just say. <laughs> um, oh, uh, one more thing for the Ultimate Beast War Beast Machines box set. Uh, one Obsidian Voyager Sandstorm. No, nope. <laughs> I don't agree uh, because he's got to have the uh, the two separate propellers um off the side it can't just be a helicopter it's got to be the Ospreay helicopter i think it's called um so the only real one that works was the movie one incinerator um and if you look at that mold it's actually pretty close because like his the propellers come out to his hands and they're almost like long fingers anyway uh, strike a chug onslaught mold the one that doesn't combine that's what i was thinking Three Tankor Armada Megatron. Uh, are you meaning the uh, leader class Megatron? Um, I could see that. Uh, Jetfire Cybertron Voyager Starscream. Um, the mold that mold the legs can be posed just like the original. Is there Cybertron and Voyager Starscream? Uh, five Thrust is the hardest because they haven't made uh, too many bike transformers. Maybe a retooling of Prime RC. No. Uh, <laughs> Girlbot. Um, or 
and our axle and sideways from RD. I'd say oil slick from animated would be a good option. Um, uh, Alright, uh, moving on. Uh, Mamba Chum Chum says, I've never felt that those figures are were worth the prices. And Trans5 replies with, Amen. My sentiments exactly. Alex Dalton says, I've always thought convention exclusive fig figures should be way cheaper. Um, but when the exclusive are, are just repaints with uh, new heads, it's ridiculous. Trans5 then says, I've never been to a BotCon, and after calculating the cost and the exclusive, it may a long time before I go, much less the exclusives. And Alex says, I've never been either. I'm, I, I haven't been to a BotCon, and apparently this is the last year for it, so I never will be. Uh, Nick Sandwich Game says, I never once bought any bot conversions of anything due to the asinine prices they charge. I mean, $500 for a damn combiner. Combiner War set that isn't even that great. Sorry, but Warbatron is calling for that price. Exactly. That That's my point. Is why buy, you know, a Combiner Wars figure when you can get Warbatron. It just... I don't know. Uh, Yen and Me says, BotCon exclusives never worth the money is one thing, especially given what you can get with third-party prices, or third-party figures these days. Uh, but BBTS jacking up some of the some of these prices is another thing. I believe the cl club recently had a big online clearance sale. Um, still not worth anything to me, and that's just another proof of the exclusivity of those figures. Now, when I first posted this video, um, someone put, put it on the... Um, uh, put it on Facebook and people were arguing with me on the prices saying that Big Bad Toy Store was uh, uh, racking up the prices on it. Uh, so I went on to the BotCon website and looked it up. Uh, the box set is actually $400 if you are a club member. Uh, if you're not a club member, then it's $500. So uh, BBTS is charging $500 for the set. Um, for the box one and $400 for the loose one or something like that. So, that's the same price. I don't understand or get where people are coming, where, well, oh, well, these things are cheaper at the convention. It's like, I'm on the convention page. It's saying four to $500 for this fucking box of, of crap. Um, and you get, like, one more exclusive figure. whoop de fucking do uh, I'm sorry. And I'm not, a, I'm not a club member. I won't be a club member because why? Um, they don't give you anything really worthwhile these days. Uh, a few years ago, they gave us Runabout and Runamuck. Those things were great. Awesome figures. They should have stuck with things like that. Things that were unique and had great ideas behind it. And it was like, oh, hey, that works for that mold. Um, but they haven't done that in a long time. Um, those ones had great quality control. Great paint. Uh, they just look good all around. Awesome box set. And... But since then, I have yet to see the quality of those types of figures in the TFCC or the BotCon. Um, and that, that's, that's my problem. And it's just, uh, for, you know, four to $500. And, and that's, that's just if you're buying the box set at the convention. That's it. That's all you're getting out of that. Um, you still have to go to the convention, uh, you know, which is going to cost you airfare or, uh, or gas, you know, however you want to. And wear and tear on your car, however you want to go. Um, then we're talking hotel costs, and then there's actually what fifty dollars for the actual convention. I'm not sure. I didn't look up that part, but you have to pay for the convention itself. Um, you know, food, drink, all that stuff. When you can buy the box set from Big Bad Toy Store for five hundred dollars and have it shipped. Up to you. I think I think that's actually the cheaper option. Um, anyway, uh, uh, but yeah, sometimes Big Bad Toy Store does jack up the prices, but if you actually go to the, the club site, you'll see things like the Scourge, uh, cost more money than the other deluxes that came out the same time. And the only reason why they're charging more money for that is because they can, and they know people will pay for it. Um. And then when it goes to Big Bad Toy Store, they charge more money for it because they have to make some money. Um, and 
Uh, it, no, none of it. None of it makes any sense. Uh, Matthew, Matthias Morcobus is, says it no longer matters because fan pub will no longer have the license, especially after the Hasbro Mattel merger or the Disney Disney takeover of Hasbro. Here's the question: If Hasbro merges with Mattel. Do you think Disney would actually be able to take them over, or would they be more likely to take Disney over? Eh? Eh? Uh, Anthony Court says, uh, This is why I'm sticking to third-party, not 500 repaints of the same figure over and over. Very good. Uh, Mechanic uh, says, For a 45-minute video, it would be awesome if you provided timestamps in the description for each of your each of the questions you're answering on topics you're addressing, so people could get an idea of the overall content of the episode, uh, as well as the ability to skip to things that might interest them most. Just a thought. That's a great idea. I don't have time to do it. Is my problem. I don't. I'm not tech savvy, so I just don't have the time time nor the patience to do it at the moment. Uh, maybe once I get a stable staff at the hotel, then I will. But. Because it's a great idea. I'm not saying it's not. I mean, I would love to have an intro at the beginning of my videos. I, I would love so much stuff for my videos. I just don't have the time to do it. Um, Errol Hewitt says, it always, I always uh, used to wonder if there, if there was ever worth the price. I only have one Transformer Club figure, and that's Astrotrain, and bought him secondhand. Um, yeah, so, like I said, some of them are, are worth it. They are. Um, like Runabout and Runamuck. Um, those are great chug collection uh, figures right there. Or it because they were smaller in the cartoon, you could hypothetically put them in an MP collection. And because the paint quality is actually really top, top notch, um, they would look okay in an MP shelf. Um, so, so there's that. Um, the G2 Ramjet was also pretty solid. Um, I, I enjoyed that figure a lot. Um, you know, some of them, some of them were pretty good. I had the, uh, Botcon, uh, Razor Claw at one point, um, and that was shit, utter total shit. I remember you just opening up, like, I was so excited to finally get a Razor Claw, and I opened it up, I was like, what the fuck am I looking at here? Um, and, and the Rampage, oh my god. Um, so I, I would say just watch lots of reviews, um, and just pick the ones that you think are good. I mean, I don't think the, the Machine Wars ones looks, you know, is going to be very good, but I'm a huge fan of Beast Machines, so I want to get it. But, man, uh, um, Rio X 500 slash Big Ray says, I think a really good BotCon figure Hasbro could do is Beast Wars Inferno. Uh, from the Generations Waspinator mold. Uh, they could remove the wings and give it a new paint job and make him look like he did in the show. I think the best thing for them to do is reissue the Beast Wars Inferno because that was a pretty solid figure to begin with. Uh, just instead, the entire figure is made out of clear plastic. Um, so instead of doing that, maybe cast it in regular plastic and give it a really nice metallic red paint job. Uh, I think that would be awesome like i like that hot rod red you guys know i love i i think that would be the better option because the wasp editor mold i i don't think would work um because it's got the stinger it's got the wasp body not so much an ant body um and and he doesn't he wouldn't have the propeller for the ass and just it it, it wouldn't work i don't think um Rexbot says, I enjoy Tripurtigus. I also enjoy Tripurtigus. I, I know, right? He's one of the awesomest combiners ever. Um, BVZXA3 says, It's weird the colors are based on the Beast Wars 2 version Tripurtigus. Um, are they? I thought some of them were... I thought, like, Cicadacon was still green. I don't know. I, I haven't actually watched Beast Wars 2. Uh, I got lucky one year and got BotCon 2000, 2000 Shock Rock for $50. Shock Rock would be the... Is that a repaint of Rampage or Inferno? I can't remember. 
No, and Antagony was the Inferno one. So yeah, Rampage. Nice. Fifty bucks for that. Nice. Um, the last BotCon piece I bought recently was 2010 Double Punch Ste Sealed for $80. That was Inner John Scorponok. I do know some things. Um, that one looked alright. Um, I can never really justify spending the money on the figures unless uh, they are cheap. And I really want them for a specific reason. See, like, Runabout Runabout, you could usually get them for about 100 bucks for the pair. So that's 50 bucks each. Um, that's still a little bit more money than I would say it's worth. Well, you know, again, you know, I for those particular one, those two, uh, I I put them in the class classification, like the um, the Hen Henke, um, uh, and Transformers U United and stuff. Um, where you know Takara does them, so they they do a little bit better job with QC and a better job with the paint. Because they, they were really nice, paint nicely painted, uh, so it's like things like that. I would or, or, I would I would say it's it's worth the fifty bucks. You know, if all of their figures were in the quality of those two, then I w there wouldn't be a question uh, on if these things are worth it. But when you get when you buy this expensive uh, Botcon Thundercracker and he comes with two left missile launchers and his arms are super loose, so the missile launchers can't even hold it. Then it's not worthwhile at anymore. <laughs> um, all right, I remember the fiasco of the Games of Deception set uh, with Takara when when Takara released Thundercracker. I was on the Cybertron forums and they cried foul. However, I, I I noted sooner or later one of the companies would release him, uh, and they did. The only set I'm really interested in paying top dollar for is the 2006 Botcon set. Only because, like you, I am a fan of Beast Wars. However, I agree with the amount of money you would spend, uh, you can get more toys. Oh my god. Oh, so that's the um, Dawn of Futures Past? I think. Is that, is that what that one was? I don't remember what it was called. But it's the pre-Beast Wars one, and oh my god, the price on that set is just insane. We're talking thousands for five repaints of Cybertron figures and one Cyberjet motherfucker he's on the list that Waspinator is on my list of Cyberjets I need to get at some point and and he got last time I checked uh, last time I found him on eBay he was $320 $320 for a Waspinator a Cyberjet that I already have the same mold for and it's like one of these days I'm going to have to buy it because I want the whole set but, oh my god, that's just insane. Just insane. Supposedly, the extra price is due to the licensee fees um, to use the molds for the convention. Because of this, I really stay away from the BotCon and the TFCC repaints. When I get TFCC, when I got TFCC Dion, Dion, uh, his head was missing the faceplate. Luckily, TFCC uh, actually sent me a replacement head. See, here's the thing. You know, they license out the mold and they repaint them and they have to charge so much for the for so that they can use these molds. Um, now, that's good business for Hasbro to an extent. If the price on the sets were cheaper, let's say a BotCon Combiner War set, let's say this tri Triproticus thing, was in the range of the Unite Warriors. Uh, set so about 150 bucks. It was 150 bucks. They'd move a ton more product, um, and thus they would make their money up like that. Um, so they could charge less for use use for Fun Pump using the molds. They would move a ton more product, and they would just in the end they would sell more. Um, they they wouldn't be able to keep them in stock, uh, especially if it was just like it's like yeah the prices are the same as you know retail or so. Um, but it's only available this one day. Um, you know, I, I, I criticize Games Workshop a lot. Um, a lot lately because they do some really crappy things. But on their Games Day, um, they always have uh, some exclusive miniatures. Uh, and, and what they do with their exclusive miniatures is it's a fresh mold that will only be used one time for that convention. That's it. 
Um, we're talking little miniatures. Um, but, I mean, they still spend all the money to build this mold. Um, so they build this mold. It's used the one time for the convention exclusive. That's it. That's the only time they're going to use the mold, then it's gone. Um, this figure comes out, and they sell it for what it would normally be at retail. So, and you can see it happen too, because when you first see these things pop up on eBay, they're only like 20, 30 bucks. Um, by the end of the week, they're in the hundred range, um, you know, for, for a miniature, you know, and it's like that I can understand because now we're talking about supply and demand, but it was only released for that one weekend. Uh, and it was a fresh brand new mold that will never be used again. And people went crazy for that because it's like, I want the one model that no one else is going to have that's going to start collecting a year from now. You know, uh, I, I think that that would make them Hasbro a lot more money. But anyway, what do I know? Uh, Anthony Court says, um, the in impact of their releases is just Combined Wars Rook with M and MMC releases a superior version hands down. Now here's the, here's the problem though. Um, uh, they're going to be about the same price. <laughs> Rio X 500 slash big race says, I have a rant of the week suggestion. Uh, why do some collectors refuse to buy Unicron Trilogy toys as they think they are garbage, yet they buy the same mold if it's repainted as an exclusive or botcon figure, i.g. a collector may not want Armada Unicron uh, when it was released again in the universe toy line, they will buy it even though there's no change to changes to it. Well, the um, the universe Unicron actually did have some changes, um, better paint job and a different head, I believe. Or no, that's the Amazon one, and Toys R Us did, I think. Um, so there was some changes to it, but um, I, I'd say you know the the big difference is the fact that uh, they are the so a lot of collectors now are trying to go IDW or G1, and well, the Armada, uh, the Unicron trilogy um, had some characters that paid uh, homage homage to uh, G1 characters. None of them were really great representations of the G1 characters. Now, when you take the figure and you repaint them. To resemble a G1 character even closer, then I could see it uh, why people would buy it. I uh, outside of that, uh, you, you got the other problem of the Armada line uh, suffered from lack of articulation, so that they could make the mini cons work. Energon, all the Autobots suffered from the crappy tear them in half and uh, make them all combiners gimmick. And Cybertron suffered from extremely bad quality control. Uh, <laughs> that that was bad. That was bad quality control. That whole line. I, everyone I got had something horribly wrong with it. Um, so that's what that's why I would say is the number one reason why collectors now won't buy those things. Uh, and, and even even me, like I would rather get a new version. Of an Armada character, then buy the Armada character itself. Um, uh, Deluxe just did a review on the Armada Megatron, the original one, and he can't, you know, he can't move his legs up and down at all. They could go in and out, but they won't go up and down uh, because they didn't mold the figure to have legs that move up and down, and that's that's stupid. That's just stupid. Um, anyway, moving on. Um, uh, Ashaman55, hey, how about $55 for Pounce and Wingspan via cons? It's unclear it's on the official TFCC website, uh, for that amount. Just thought you should know. Um, the problem there is that you have to buy the, you have to be a member of the club in order to order from their store. So I think the cheapest one was $40. So that automatically puts the pounds a week span back up to 95. So why become a club member for that? Um, especially since they're going to be going out of business at the end of the year. 
Uh, and the Machine War set uh, is only 150 so 195 so 200 Might as well get it from Big Bad Toy Store. Uh, oh, I lost the comment. Uh, at the same site, so cheaper than what you were acceptable with. So, yeah, that's the problem. You have to be a member of the club. Uh, John Michael Agu Agura Aguro. I'm terrible with names. I'm sorry. Uh, I I brought this up this issue before on some of the forums, and I shit you not. Members and workers of the club went and talked shit about shit to me about it. Uh, say I was just jealous because I couldn't afford their crap. I still think uh, they are overpriced crap. Uh, what the club should have done is offer us Japanese exclusive items. I would pay for that X9 Ravage in a heartbeat. Yes. Instead, so they give us uh, bad force repaints that are a reach, to say at least. Add in the three-page comic books, and and I have to say, if they're not, if they are not worth the effort or the price. Yeah, agreed. You know, if they would release certain things that we never got U.S. releases for as butt guns, I, I'd be okay with that too. You know, like the Ravage would be awesome. I, I, I you know, they could replace, uh, if, I mean, come on. Combiner Wars Breakdown painted black with a Ravage head that probably won't fit or it's going to be too small. Uh, I mean, I don't want that. I, I don't. There, there is no purpose for that figure. Just no. Uh, let's see. Mirage X one zero zero seven, or XL 007. Uh, yep. After going to last year's and now Beast Wars this year, uh, my least favorite run of Transformers. Uh, I'm skipping this year. I've only bought one box set, Shattered Glass, and it. And it was paid for by selling the other two I got uh, from selling my friends two sets. Uh, I had them get when they went with me. It is cool and unique. I'm not big on the prices. Uh, and the extra money for seeing Megatron voice actor uh, uh, plus I didn't bite. Oh yeah. Yeah, a lot of those conventions. And this is not typical BotCon. It's just typical of a lot of conventions that I've seen. Um, there was a Star Trek convention in uh, Denver a little while ago, and it's like, I'm a huge fan of Riker. Um, and it was like 50 bucks a day to go to the convention, and it was another $40 to meet him and get an autograph. And I'm like, I am not spending $90 for an autograph of William Riker. Uh, I'm just, I'm not. I, it, no, if they're going to be at the convention, they, they should just be, you know, have an autograph booth booth and and you know sign autographs um i shouldn't have to pay extra to go see them for something i'm already paying to go see <sighs> that's like uh going to a movie theater and then having to pay a little bit extra to hear the audio <laughs> it's like it's like oh yeah you get the uh, the voice uh the voices and the sound effects but there's no background music so if you want the background music please enter insert ten dollars it's like and if you've ever tried to watch a movie with the background music, it's absolutely horrible. Uh, but anyway, anyway, yeah, it's no. And the uh, advertisement of Botcom as a family vacation idea, uh, no. If you go, if you go for it, TF fans, um, if you want to pay the prices uh, now for all the Botcom stuff, just like how people way overcharge uh, women for their interests like clothes, haircuts, because, well, they keep paying the prices. Joke. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's always an issue. It's like, if you don't pay the overpriced prices, then you can't go. You know, if you don't go, then other people won't go. And eventually they'll just close up. They won't drop the prices. They'll just stop. And that's that's stupid. Uh, Russell uh, Dubious says, Holy crap, I got reamed out for some bot con lovers uh, because I said the exact same thing as you. Yeah, um, right now I'm getting some pretty decent comics. Uh, I'm sure in the next couple weeks I'm going to have to disable comics just like I did on some other videos. Um, like I said at the beginning of this one. 
Uh, Ultron T says, for the price the botcon demands, they should be releasing unique molds. Exactly. Uh, or heavy retools. Um, like, like as retooled as um, Dead End was when they retooled him into, say, Prowl. Um, heavy, heavy retool. Uh, new head, new car panels. It's like, okay, I, I, I can understand that one, you know, it, it, at the least. But a different head? No. Uh, and exclusive masterpiece figures. Because it would, if third party companies are capable of producing limited run figure lines, there should be no reason why Hasbro or Takara couldn't do that for BotCon. Um, see, like, I think that would be a better better place to put, like, the uh, Diaclone ones. You know, I, I wouldn't mind seeing the Diaclone ones come out as, as, like, a box set for, like, $500. You know, five maybe $600 of, like, the Diaclone cars, uh, MP cars. You know, that would be pretty cool. Because remember, at the end of the day, the BotCon um, <laughs> Transformer figures, you know, that are Deluxe Combiner Wars repaint crap are more expensive than an MP car. There's something to think about. But, you know, if they were to control the prices a little bit better and, you know, had, like, the Diaclone versions of him, like, with Tiger Tracks, stuff like that, um, uh, Clamp Down, you know, that, that box set would be actually pretty cool. Um, Tracks is, you know, as Turbo, or... I can't remember what Tracks' other name was, the, the repaint. Road Rage. You know, wheel jacks, uh, whatever, you know, things like that. Um, you know, that would be pretty cool to see. You know, just a box set of Diaclones or repaints that we never would have seen otherwise. Uh, and so we're getting those as the official Masterpiece figures. Just to bolster the numbers, I guess. Uh, let's see. Another problem with BotCon is that there hasn't been any real good series since Prime. And it's just been unbelievably... Unbelievable that they still haven't made an official English dub version of the Japanese Headmaster series. I know, right? Just call it some of the original voice actors, come, have them come back, and just redub the whole thing. That's it. But then again, if you actually think of it in this way, though, the end of the American series uh, then plays into Beast Wars. Um... And, and that's how it works, is Beast Wars is in that continuity. If you add in the Japanese show, I don't know if Beast Wars will fit into it as well. So, uh, there's something to think about. Uh, anyway. Uh, uh, let's see, Japanese Masters, because it would be, because it is a seriously badass cartoon. Also, would you be upset if Takara decided to make a masterpiece mega... Tron that transformed into a tank. No, I wouldn't. I'd prefer a gun, but if they can make it look like um, a good representation of a G1 Megatron, uh, I, I would be okay with it. Um, and could you do a rant on separate rant or separate rants on all of the different Megatron and Galvatron alternate modes that have come about over the years? Maybe. Uh, that sounds like a long one. <laughs> Uh, Jonathan Sweeney says botcon prices are ridiculous and this year they are limiting the good figures so so you have to purchase the golden ticket package $724 each to be assured that you will have an option to get one of everything um, they're not unveiling any bots except for the combiner and they have a limited edition 100 figures legend class repaint and a new head sculpt for the GT um gold ticket attendees which uh i think is a first that toy will sell for big bucks on the secondary market sure it will but it's not worth 724 bucks uh the duke 013 says uh so if they if they merge does that mean we could see optimus prime in the next toy story movie which could be could uh which would be cool uh, to see a G1 toy join the cast. And Fun Pub is all about the money. That would be alright. 
I, I could see Optimus Prime cruising down the road in the next Toy Story. Uh, Chris Ugg78 you says the TFCC G2 Ramjet was pretty good and it came in a cool box. Yeah, see, I told you. Uh, the price is, isn't that bad either. I think I got mine 45 bucks shipped. Runabout and Runamuck were really good too with the box art. Um, yeah, Ramjet, uh, last time I checked, he was going for about 80 to 100, um, which is pretty expensive. But, you know, again, because the quality of the paint and the detail um, and the QC, it was worth the price, I thought. Um, Tombstone Cross says, um, prices in general go up for toys. Uh, I'm in my mid thirties now and with, uh, with bills for cars, etc., I have to choose wisely for which plastic crack I spend my money on. Real life has, has me in an iron grip. I know. <laughs> oh man, do I know. Uh, Megatron Prime says, I think BPTS has the set for 400 to 500. Non attendee versus attendee prices. Uh, 400 for no box, 500 for box. Uh, I may be wrong, but how can a set be this exclusive if they are repaints and slight remolds of four fifteen ninety nine figures and a $20 Voyager figure? Uh, uh, makes me want to stop collecting. Yeah, if all the prices were like that, <laughs> I wouldn't have this. I, I would sell this on a heartbeat if all the prices for regular figures went that that much higher. Uh, wouldn't do it. But you know, prices of third party figures are going down, and the MPs are staying the same. And then we got uh, anyway. Man, we'll move on. Daniel McClug says, "Nail on the head, my friend." Um, Jay Black says, is there really such a thing as an official collector to collector only? Uh, I mean, like, what the F has the world come to? How F and stupid can a collector be to just collect official Hasbro toys? Um, you know, I, I've heard it. I've heard people say that. Um, you know, uh, either Hasbro and Takara only or Hasbro only, which... Those ones aren't very common, but they usually are the ones that don't have the big budget, uh, which is understandable. I can I can fully understand that. Um, but there are some people that like if you were to say, "Hey, I'm going," you know, I know you got a chug collection, so I'm going to give you this third party shrapnel, and they're going to say no because it's not official. And there are some people like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Hasbro has been raping and sodomizing their fans for years. Um, it's like a stupid better wife that goes back to her beating husband time after time. But at the same time, the sex is pretty good. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm masochist uh, when it comes to Hasbro because there's some things that's like Man, I hate Combiner Wars, but I probably bought every single Combiner Wars figure there was. Uh, I mean, I'm still, I'm still just as bad as everybody else. Uh, I keep going back to it, like hoping that the Bruticus will be good, and the individual ones weren't that great, but the combine mode was pretty good. Uh, Quick Strike 2010 says um, they they still have the Swarm set for 169. Eh, still expensive. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, that is the uh, viewer response tomorrow. I will briefly go over the stuff that happened at the Toy Fair. Um, in my opinions. But as you guys know, my videos don't have... I don't have editing stuff, so I don't put pictures in. So it's not going to be too much excitement. Um, and yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs>